Hi, I'm Jason Sullivan of Rathbone Group, and this is On Subrogation. This is our final video in the Hearsay series. As discussed before, hearsay is any out-of-court statement that is being presented to prove the truth of the matter asserted. You need a person, a declarant, who said something out of court, and you need a witness who's going to state what that declarant said and try and have it be admissible. We talked about what are completely accepted and not counted as hearsay under the federal rules, as well as exceptions that are applied even if the declarant, the person who made the statement out of court, is available to testify. There's a third category that we're going to talk about in today's video where the declarant, the person who made the statement, must be unavailable. So under the federal rules, what does it mean when a witness is unavailable? The witness is unavailable under a number of scenarios, most common if the person refuses to testify despite a court order, or they have an illness or death or something else that prevents them from appearing in court and testifying. It is not the case that if a party forgets to issue a subpoena, that makes a person unavailable, nor is a person's just refusal to show up unavailability under the federal rules. Rather, the court has to issue an order that the person appear. So if there's a subpoena and they ignore the subpoena, that may constitute unavailability under the federal rules. So in cases where a witness is unavailable, what are some of the exceptions to the hearsay rule under the federal rules? Well, the first one that we're going to talk about today is former testimony. In this case, if we have a person who has given testimony under oath and the parties to the litigation that's being heard by the court there had the opportunity and the motivation to cross-examine them, that former testimony is going to be allowed to be admitted if the person is unavailable. If we break this down a little bit more, one, we need to make sure that it's sworn testimony. It's not just a statement. It was a statement that was made under oath. Second, we want to make sure that the parties to the litigation had an opportunity to cross-examine. Just because a person maybe gave a deposition in a completely unrelated matter and this topic came up doesn't mean that, in this case, the defendant had the opportunity to cross-examine or the motivation. The court wants to make sure that the, all the parties have had the opportunity to ask follow-up cross-examination questions to really probe the veracity of whatever the witness stated. Finally, the witness has to be unavailable. If the witness is available, the court would rather have fresh, new testimony made at that time in the courtroom. They don't want to just read prior transcripts when the person has the ability to be there and testify. The second category that we're going to talk about is statement under imminent belief of impending death. The federal rules and a lot of the state rules differ on exactly what this rule means, but for the federal rule purposes, the statement must be made by the person who believed they were going to die and the statement must be about what caused or the occurrence leading to that Im imminent death. It does not matter under the federal rules whether or not the person actually passed away. However, it's very unlikely if the person didn't die that they're going to be unavailable. So this rule usually requires that the person is no longer with us and therefore unavailable under the rules. Finally, the third thing that we're going to talk about is statement against interest. A statement against interest is a statement made by any witness that's against their interest, whether that's their pecuniary interest, their financial interest, or anything else regarding their reputation or their potential liability. We talked about the exceptions to hearsay in which a statement by the adverse party, a mission by party opponent, is not treated as hearsay at all under the rules. The big exception with this one is that the statement against interest doesn't require that it be made by another party. It, rather, any witness, as long as the statement is against their interest, that's a statement against interest. It doesn't mean that they have to be a defendant in the case in order for that to be admissible under this exception. This is going to conclude our three-part series on hearsay. If you have any questions or have other topic areas you'd like to hear about, please email us at video at rathbonegroup.com. For On Subrogation and Rathbone Group, I'm Jason Sullivan, and that's the long and short of it.